Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and you know, there are a lot of choosing baggers out there, but some of them, it's not just about begging. They want you to pay for even trying to help them out. So what do they do? They get the law involved. But before we start our episode today, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notifications bell, and leave me a comment in the end of this video. Man returns iPhone, owner complains. Posted by Ethan Bayanagru, 1988. There's this radio show where I'm from, where a lawyer does call-ins from people asking him to help arbitrate their cases. My country doesn't really have a small claims court, and most people are too poor to afford a lawyer anyway. One case involved a man who forgot his iPhone, whatever was new in 2016, in a taxi. Normally, that means that the iPhone was lost forever, because pawning a brand new iPhone could make you more than a month's salary. But the taxi driver was a decent person and found a way to return the phone. So why was a guy who against all odds got his damn brand new iPhone back calling a lawyer? Because it wasn't returned sooner. Yes, the guy who forgot his iPhone and got it returned to him called a lawyer and tried to publicly shame the person who returned an iPhone. An iPhone that, I would like to remind you, probably cost more than he made in a month. Because it got returned to him on Monday after he lost it, he lost it on Friday, he claims that he needed it for work and that it contains a lot of personal information, but nobody believed him. The lawyer tore him on live radio and he basically got shouted down for being an entitled jackass. Edit. Oh wow, first go, thanks everyone. Hey guys, that's the hard thing about doing good things to choosing beggars. You do what you can and they still try to call a lawyer to humiliate you on a radio show. Sure you saved my life, but who is paying for my car? Posted by, you got about 13. I've been a fireman for years and seen way too many dumb people, but thought I'd share one with you. Got called out to an MVA, motor vehicle accident. It was a rollover and the driver was trapped, unconscious and seriously hurt. We had to use the jaws to cut her out of the car, then transported her to the hospital. A few weeks later, a woman walked into the station demanding to speak to someone with authority. That would be me. When I asked if I could help her, she told me that she had been the driver of the vehicle, but I didn't have a car insurance and now the car is garbage and I still own on it. Who is going to pay for it? I told her that I was glad to see her walking around and I was happy she's okay. Don't give me that. Who is paying for my car? Who told you you could cut my car to pieces? So I said that it was nice that she came all this way to thank us and I'd be happy to pass it to the guys who risked their lives saving hers. Don't screw with me, that was an expensive car and now it's garbage. I personally thought it was garbage after the first row. I'll have you know that my sister's husband is the best lawyer in this town. So I gave her the address and phone number of City Hall and luckily for me, the alarm went off and I had to go and cut someone else's car apart so they could live, all without their permission. Guys, I know it sounds crazy, but the, the military actually had stopped teaching people how to resuscitate others because usually when you perform CPR, you may end up breaking a cup of bones and they actually had soldiers in the past being sued because they saved someone's life and because of that the military at least for a while decided you know what we're just not gonna teach our soldiers how to save lives because if they do the army may get in trouble for that that's sad people just doing their jobs and they still have to hear people complaining that oh i'm alive but now i have bills yeah Married into a choosing beggar family. Posted by u slash armada5. If you think you're casually encountering a choosing beggar is bad, try marrying into a family full of them. I made that mistake. My wife came from a full-blooded white trash who assumed that since I worked a decent job, I was obligated to cover all their expenses. 
Example, I came home from work one day and found my wife crying on the phone with her mom. Her mom had called and was needing 2000 right away to hire a lawyer or she was going to lose everything. And my wife convinced me to give it to her. It was about half of the savings we had at the time. Fast forward a week later, I'm on Facebook and I see my mother-in-law, her partner and several of my other in-laws have rented a massive condo and are vacationing for a week on the beach. I asked my wife why her mom could afford that but couldn't afford the money for an attorney. She told me that her mom and her partner have two bank accounts, one for necessities and one for fun money and they never pay for necessities like attorneys out of their fun money account. That is how they paid for their vacation. I had not gone on vacation for two years. This was just one example, but I would get about three or four demands for money from her family every month. I was relieved the day I signed the divorce papers. Hey guys, you know, quoting Titus, if you meet your girl's family and they're all crazy, don't start thinking that she's the sane one, okay? I stole your identity, now please go to jail for me. Posted by you slash Mary. I don't post on Reddit often, but be patient with me. Also, this is kind of a long one, so get some popcorn. About 15 years ago, I was in a car accident, not my fault, and I was awarded $25,000 in insurance money as a result. I took the opportunity to move out of my mom's home and get a cute little studio apartment for me and my cat. The people in either side of the courtyard were very nice and I made friends fairly quickly with all of the neighbors despite being so much younger than all of them. After living there for around a year, I met a girl my age and we became, I thought, good friends. She had had marriage problems and was separated from her husband and the two children she had were in foster care for reasons she wouldn't tell anyone. She begged me to help her get her kids back from CPS, so I got a list of guidelines from the local office and together, Beggar and I started planning to try to get her children back. I bought her children furnishings and helped her get a job. I even used some of my insurance money to help her get a used car so that she had transportation for her and her kids. And she did get her kids back. They had a small two-bedroom apartment she slept on the couch and her children each had their own bedrooms. The girl's room was decked out in Dora the Explorer furnishings that I had bought for her and the boy's room was decorated with sports scars, as he requested. It was a lot of money, but I was a sucker and I thought it was a good cause. Soon after getting her kids back, she stopped coming over as often. Her kids came over all the time, but she was usually nowhere to be seen. I found out that she was attempting to settle things with her husband, and he moved in with her, bringing his drug problem with him. I also noticed the sleeping arrangements had changed. They had crammed the children into the smallest bedroom together, pawing off all the toys and furniture that wouldn't fit. Apparently, they used the money on pills. At this point, I sort of started distancing myself from Beggar because I don't want to get involved with someone doing drugs. I did still watch the kids, however, as I felt bad for them. Their parents are often found loaded up in pills and alcohol. At this point, I was out of the insurance money and was working 12-hour shifts with elderly hospice patients as a caregiver. I used a large portion of my income to make sure the kids were fed since Beggar and her husband spent all their money on drugs and liquor. It also meant that I very rarely had time to hike down to the center courtyard to check my mail. I'm guessing I had gone a month without looking, expecting that all I had was a few catalogs and several copies of the weekly shopper coupons. I've learned my lesson and I check my mail often now. When I opened my mailbox, I was alarmed by the large stack of government sealed letters that had been wedged in it. There are six separate letters, all of which accuse me of a different offense. This culminated in me having five warrants out for my arrest on a court date. It turns out that Beggar had gotten an old used car from a local junk dealership. The car had, if I can't remember the list, no tags, an expired license plate, 
and a missing tail light, so of course it was pulled over. Bagger, being on a probational period with CPS, meaning if she stepped out of the line they would take her kids away again, panicked and decided that she would lie about her identity. So, she said she was me and she was driving without a license and insurance because she had forgotten her purse. Oh, woman. The first thing I did was go to her and ask what this was as I recognized the model of the car as the one she was so proud to have gotten. After having pawned the car, I helped her get a year prior. I didn't even know you could pawn a car, by the way. She smiled at me and simply said, You don't have a criminal record, so they won't punish you like they would me. You don't want me to lose my kids again, do you? I'm not sure what she expected, but I was beyond caring at that point. I was pissed. The first thing I did was cancel my work for the next few days and I set about making appointments with a lawyer and a police officer that took beggar's word that she was me simply because she knew my name and address. The next day, I was at the police department where I watched the video of the interaction between the cop and beggar. Turns out he was a newbie and he just didn't want to get in trouble for taking someone's word when he really shouldn't have. And luckily for me, Beggar's husband was there and she was instructed to switch seats with him because I can't allow you to drive without proper ID, ma'am. She then walked around the back of the car in full view of the camera. The officer admitted his mistake since I wasn't pregnant. My hair wasn't a gigantic curly mass and I was a good foot taller than she was. I know I didn't mention her being pregnant, but I had to cut some things out. The next day, on my way out to visit my lawyer, I was waylaid by Bagger and Bagger's mom. They were both furious with me for going to the police and I was instructed to go back to the station and tell them that I made a mistake and that I was actually the one at fault. When I said no, it hit the fan. Bagger left, but her mother remained. She stood in my way in the path and wouldn't let me get to my car, all the while I was screaming of how she was going to tell everyone that I molested the children when they're in my care. I was young and that did scare me a little because I didn't want to be placed on a list for something I would never ever do. Still though, I recognized that she was screaming these threats in full view of many of the neighbors in my courtyard, many of whom had stepped outside to see what all the fuss was about. The police were called and she was given a warning. I was asked if I want to get a restraining order, but for some reason I said no. Over the next few days, CPS approached me and I told them everything, all the while feeling like I should have come forward sooner. The children are again taken into foster care, and that's where all of this should have ended, with me learning a valuable lesson. Nope. In the weeks that followed, Bagger gave my phone number to everybody under the sun. I was called for drugs, sexual favors and even for loans. One of my car's windows was smashed in with a brick and there was a shoe polish writing the words liar on the back of the car. At one point people started coming and banging on the door of my apartment in the middle of the night and they shattered my front window and broke my bird feeder. I was safe from taking any legal action for all of this when beggar's husband and beggar were thrown in jail for identity theft, buying and selling drugs of the charges that had previously been mine and child endangerment. There may have been more, but I can't remember. The apartment hired 24 hour security because of everything that had happened and they also installed security cameras all around the courtyards. The LDR, I learned a hard lesson on who I can and cannot trust after having a friend steal my identity and almost getting tossed in jail for crimes that she committed. Edit. This happened in Texas. Guys, I'll tell you, no matter how much you want to help people, some people cannot be helped. You know, you may give a hand if the person wants your whole arm, just pull your hand back because they may bite it really, really quick. Hey guys, I hope you liked today's video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit that notifications bell, give me a thumbs up, and leave a comment. That really helps a lot the channel. Thank you very much and I'll see you guys tomorrow.